you didn't have a sip. I had two sips. Did you? We I were going to get notice. absolutely hammered. I wanted to do shots with you and everything in there, but <laughs> it's not. It's not for today. Maybe no, another not day. Not for today. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tipsy Talk with none other than Sarah Sharonin. And I'm pronouncing your name right and I know that, which feels Well, you good. know that because yeah. <laughs> you're from the motherland. Come here and I tell you, I have, I have to say, the first thing I have to say is I have a little confession to me. Okay. So I lose my accent. I've been living here a few years now. What? I know, it's awful, isn't it? I do, and, but I, I hear you and I'm like, how has she kept it so intact? But your accent's it's so strong Because still. I'm with you, and this is the confession I need to make. So I do a lot of these interviews. <laughs> and to get my accent back beforehand, I listen to in your interviews. Do you? <laughs> I do, Even when you're doing other people's interviews, yeah. do you? Because I'm so Irish. Because you're so Irish. So the fact that you're here today, I was like, oh, I don't have to do that you today. You just listen should... to me. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Well, well, glad I could help. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should we have should our, yeah. Slauncha. Yeah. Slauncha. Slauncha. Such a pleasure to meet you, Thanks genuinely. Brooklyn. That's, well, we're coming to Lady Bird shortly, I promise. Yeah. But I watched that on a plane. Oh, that's so, <laughs> the worst place. You'll get so emotional. On a plane to America, no oh, less. No. <laughs> and uh, the air hostess had to come over and ask, was I all right? Because I was just in floods. And then I watched it with the mammy at Christmas and she keep pausing oh, it yeah, for me. Oh yeah, it was on at Christmas. Everyone texted me after. Yeah. So like, it's so great. I loved it so much. And people who like <laughs> were never like emotional or sensitive with me before. Because you know the way mm. people are, they're sort of like, oh no, like in fairness, it was good. They're just suddenly like, <laughs> I loved it so much. I had so many men come up to me after that film came out and they were like, no, no, usually I wouldn't be into that sort of thing, but uh, no, that, that was a good one now. The romance and all that, the no, romance be, and all that. It wouldn't be my thing now. The girly film, you know? <laughs> it's been the same with Lady Bird. Like, it's been so relatable yeah. for so many people, you know? And we knew our film was special, but we didn't know it was gonna have such a wide release and mm -hmm. so many people were gonna have the chance to see it and connect to it and stuff and just like you know we have guys coming up to us as well but especially the teenage girls coming up to us and kind of going I've never I've never felt like I was understood before and mm -hmm. I've never felt like my life has been portrayed around that time because it's a yeah. female story told by directed by a female yeah and then you've brought up everything that you your experiences to it mm -hmm. as well and it, do, it did feel that way it felt like Oh God, someone gets me. Someone gets it, yeah. And everyone gets it on such a different level. It was funny because we came out of the cinema and I wanted to be like, no, I get it more than you. <laughs> it's mine. Yeah, like I don't think you understand. Like I was raised in Catholic <laughs> Ireland and I ate the wafers yeah, yeah, and I know yeah. what the church smells like and like I wanted to kind of own it. But then there were guys I was with who exactly. related to other characters or even to your own or, or to the relationship with the mother. And It is, it's well, very like, special. I think that's the thing about it is that yes, it is focused on a girl but it sounds cheesy but it's a very human mm. story and I think one of the things that Greta was really inspired by was like the coming of age stories that were told from the perspective of a boy mm -hmm. there's been so many really amazing like adventures that you've seen young boys go on for years and years and years mm. and whenever it's been a coming of age story with a young girl at the center of it it's usually been sort of centered around a romance or they've been validated by a guy mm -hmm. which is lovely and it's exciting but it's not the whole story yes. and i think it was important to to do that you know yeah absolutely i heard you say that um i think it was in a podcast that one of the many podcasts one of you the listen many to podcasts. to warm up your irish accent i'm almost sorry i've said that now <laughs> <Don't>. um <laughs> She immediately jumped off the page, but that you went into it not fully knowing who she was yet and kind of let it develop. What, yeah, what I, I sort I, it was one of those characters that I read and I thought, oh, I understand it, but mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to play it. I didn't know how to like execute what I got from it, you know, mm -hmm. like I really related to her and I totally connected to like fundamentally the thing she's gone through is what every young person goes through and every mother goes through and for Laurie's character and stuff. But then with that, you do feel such a responsibility because you know it is this universal mm -hmm. story and it's being told in such a sort of beautifully simple way. So you, you just, you're sort of like, oh, how do I go about this, you know? And she's also like, you know, there's nobody like her. I think that was no. the thing as well, is that Lady Bird needed to be sure of like herself. But but then, you know, like anyone, she gets notions into her head of like, I'm gonna fall in love with the lead actor and merrily yeah. we roll along and I'm gonna be with the cool guy now. Like we all do, you yeah. sort of like wanna check it off your list and it's part of the bigger story. Tell me about that audition scene with the dress and the red lipstick. Everybody says I don't. feel like there's a story behind that 
I don't know why. Greta wanted me to sing Everybody Says Don't, but she sent me the Barbra Streisand version. And I love Barbra Streisand mm. so much, as we all do. And in my mind, nobody can sing better than Barbara, certainly yeah, not can. me. <laughs> and so I was at home, I was back in the house, and I was like, I was trying to sing it like her, and I was like, this is never going to work. So I started to look up different versions online, and I found this amazing Broadway legend called Elaine Stritch. I don't know if you've ever heard mm -hmm. of her, but yeah, so she's like very, very well respected and a complete legend. And there was a version of her doing it when she was probably like 80. And it's just a freeze frame <laughs> photograph of her with a cigarette and a Great. glass of whiskey, like leaning against a piano. And she's just going like, everybody says no, everybody <laughs> says no. And she just like talk sings it. You really and I thought that's that what I should do. Old woman with a cigarette in her hand. I really I do got that, that from it. Every time the I little... do an old woman, I tend to <laughs> the little do hand, hand on, on the, the hip. hip. <laughs> it really cracks me up that there's so much about it. I feel like I could just gush at you all day about the film. Aww. I really genuinely loved it and connected to it. And Thanks. What I love so much is it's like, I think you've said this, a series of photographs. It's like mm -hmm. a little montage. It's it's moment just moment. this, yeah, like beautiful little snippets of these these tiny moments in your life. And there's even that, that scene around New Year when you're running to the post office to deliver something and everything happens yeah. so quickly. Because it does. And then the moment's yeah. gone and you don't have yeah, it anymore. And, exactly. Oh, it's just so, it's so beautiful. Like did, When you filmed, did you know that's how it would cut together or was it... Yeah, a little bit. Like the the pace of the dialogue even is so bum 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 mm -hmm. and that's how she wanted us to do it. And so I felt like even when we were making it, like the film really had a heartbeat to it and it really mm -hmm. had a pace. And I think, you know, that's something that Greta would speak to us about when we were rehearsing and when we were shooting it, is that especially when you're younger, everything's so big and it's so intense and it feels like it's the only thing that will ever matter and then it's Gone. And you're sort of not ready to take and it you're in sort until of not after ready. and then you go, oh, shit, that was really important. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's the way, like, I definitely feel that way. Less about my teenage years, more about when I was a kid and mm -hmm. I kind of go, oh, but that was actually, like, the best bit. And it's so much about home. I mean, obviously that really gets me. And that's similar to why Brooklyn got me as yeah. well. How is it for you? Because obviously you've left the motherland and you have to do that horrible goodbye at the airport every time. I know, time. it never and gets easier. It never gets easier. It never gets easier. <laughs> I'm glad to know I'm not the only one and you kind of no. go okay well I'll be back soon and you know what? it's fine. the lead up to it like once you get on the plane once you go through security yes. and you can't see it and you're like all right I'm yeah. back into it it's fine. fine but it's the lead up and yeah. it's like the few days before you're trying to relax and you can't relax anymore because you know you're going away and yeah and that's, and and that's what you see in Lady Bird in your, yeah oh my in god your bag and she's trying to send you off with some tato and <laughs> would you take a sandwich on the plane and it's just heartbreaking Mom, stop stop it <laughs> but that's sort of what what you see in Lady yeah. Bird is that like they all are very aware that there's going to be this massive change very very soon yeah. and she's going to leave home and she's going to go to college and she won't be their little ladybird anymore and so I think a lot of like her mom and her relationship it's it's based on love obviously mm. but fear and I think and they how finite out. it is like they know there's there's yeah. an end coming at some point and it's almost yeah. like neither of them is sort of willing to accept that accept and they just it. keep tugging at each other well I think Lady Bird is like ready for yeah. it but then when She's it not. happens yeah and you see her and that's the bit that always really got me and it was the same with Brooklyn as well as that and, and you know too, you know, when you leave home, you can't go back. It will never be, you can, you can you visit. You can, but it's not. You can, but it won't ever be the same. Cause you're, I know, I know. <laughs> you're essentially leaving your childhood behind. Yeah. So, but, but it only hits you once it's happened. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's that whole thing of like, the moment's gone and I didn't even have time to like. Yeah, you're standing in London in your kitchen one day and you suddenly go, oh, shit, <laughs> I can't like, drive to the beach. Oh no. <laughs> well, what I had you? this thing when I, when I moved to London at first where I was sitting on the couch and I was like, I'm really hungry. <laughs> and I, I was like, I should probably go to the kitchen because that's where the food is. And I went into the kitchen and there was no food because I hadn't bought nope. any food. And it was up to me to get the food. And I was like, oh, I guess I, must go and yeah. get the food and then I'll have to cook the food and eat the food and clean up after the food and then I'll just do it all over again. This is what I suddenly realised how my mother was keeping a house all those years and it actually I is know. quite a full time it's job. It's quite a full time job, yeah. yeah. Last thing I'm going to say is congratulations on the Oscar nomination. The third one. Yeah. It's not like it's it's new for you, but um, no, great. I'm sure you're delighted and with the film getting a Best Picture nom as well. Yeah, and Greta. And Greta. It's, it's Fifth woman ever. 
and to be so nominated. proud of her <laughs> and, and give her my love as well I and will. tell her she's really pioneering for the rest of us and I'm, I'm so happy that she's doing that and yeah. yourself you. best of luck with it thanks and this is really nice thanks I know I, I happily could stay here drinking and chatting <laughs> all day thank, thank you, you for being here today oh Slancha that has been Tipsy Talk with Sarah Sharapin that was so nice. Oh, this is lovely. We did not get drunk. We <laughs> so, didn't get drunk. Jade, I, 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 I wouldn't have even now. gotten drunk. I just would have fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I just would have had a nap.